Hello everyone and welcome to this detailed guide on installing Linux on Windows using Oracle VirtualBox. If you're new to Linux or virtualization, this video is for you. I'll walk you through everything from understanding what a virtual machine is to installing Ubuntu step by step and even post installation optimization. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully functional Linux system running inside Windows without affecting your main OS. Let's get started. Before we dive into installation, let's quickly understand what a virtual machine is. A virtual machine, also referred as VM, is a software-based emulation of a physical computer. Instead of installing Linux directly on your computer, a VM allows you to run Linux inside a window on your existing Windows system. So why use a virtual machine? First, it allows you to test different operating systems without modifying your main setup. Secondly, you can safely experiment with Linux without the risk of losing data. It's a great tool for software development, penetration testing, or server configurations. So what is a Oracle VirtualBox? Oracle VirtualBox is a free and open source virtualization tool that allows you to create and manage VMs easily. It's one of the most popular options for running Linux on Windows. Now that we understand virtualization, let's talk about Linux and why Ubuntu is a great choice for beginners. Linux is a powerful open source operating system known for its stability, security, and flexibility. Unlike Windows or Mac OS, Linux is built on the Unix-like architecture and is widely used in servers, cloud computing, and personal computing. There are various Linux distributions, each tailored for different users. Some of the most popular include Ubuntu, which is known for the most user-friendly and widely supported distribution, Debian, a stable and secure system often used for servers, Fedora, a cutting-edge distro with the latest software updates. So why choose Ubuntu? In this video, we'll be installing Ubuntu and here's why. First, it's beginner-friendly. Ubuntu has a simple and intuitive user interface. Second, strong community support. If you run into any issues, there are thousands of resources available. Third, long-term support LTS versions. These versions receive updates for five years, making them stable for daily use. With this in mind, let's move on to preparing for installation. So before we can start using Linux in our Windows machine, we first need to download a VirtualBox. So we can go to virtualbox.org, then go to download, and then we can download for Windows host. So while that is being downloaded, we can go to ubuntu.com or whatever Linux distro you prefer, then go to download, download Ubuntu desktop, so in here we have Ubuntu 24.04.2 LTS. LTS refers to long-term support. Um, so that's the latest version from Ubuntu. And we do have Ubuntu 24.10, but it's not a LTS, which means it's not a long-term support. Um, but it does comes with nine months of security and maintenance updates until July 2025. So with LTS, I guess it's five uh, years um, and now it's extended up to 12 years with Ubuntu Pro so we do have system requirements and how to install in here and you can download uh, whichever version you prefer um, I recommend you go with the LTS because it's a long-term support um, so it's a 6 gigabyte 6 GB file so I have already downloaded that uh, because it's a used file um, so if you prefer any other distro, you can download while the process remains the same. So after that has been downloaded, we will go and install the virtual box. Okay, after all our files has been downloaded, uh, we first need to install the virtual box. So just go and right click and then run as administrator. We'll just follow the normal installation process. So this might take some time. A 
Okay, once our Oracle portal box is installation is complete. So right now we don't have any virtual missing, so we need to create a new one. So on the top right we have new. So just click on that, and then we'll give the name for the our virtual missing. Um, Okay, choose the folder path you like. Um, we'll choose the ISO image um, later. So um, type Linux, subtype Ubuntu version, that, that's fine. Um, so depending on what you're installing, we can choose other different um, types as well. And their uh, subtype such as Oracle, Linux, Red Hat, and something else. And the version 6432 or more. So once you have done that, click on next. So in here, we'll choose the best memory and process for the hardware. So by default, we have um, two GB. So we can always increase that. Um, so whatever you like. So until the green section, it's totally fine. So when you cross that uh, to the red, um, that's when the um, machine is um, having problem to render the virtual machines. Um, so just select what's okay for you. So don't, um, I don't recommend to go um, after red. We can always come back later and then we can update that whenever we like. So for now, let's keep um, this and then click on next. So by default, it has selected 25 GB. So it's dynamically allocated. It doesn't mean that it's taking 25 GB out of the hard disk. It's just allocating it for now. Then it's just um, adding to it. So um, it's not taking 25 GB and then uh, keeping it somewhere. Uh, so it's the maximum space it's using. So we can always come back and um, always configure it in the future. So for now, let's um, keep something around uh, 37 GB and click on next. So you can see the summary of what you have done. So once you are satisfied, you can just click and finish. So once that has been done, we will go to the settings. So in here we'll be going to advance then in the share clipboard we will make it bi-directional and drag and drop um, as bi-directional so what this means is that you can um, cut and paste copy and paste from your uh, virtual machine to the host machine uh, for example in this case we can um, copy and paste from windows to linux and linux to windows um, so it's good to make that bi-directional so we need to choose the iso file now so in the storage in the storage section and go to the controller click that and then we'll go to this disk icon then we'll choose create a virtual optical disk so we in here we'll add then we'll go to the a file that we have just downloaded and choose the ISO file so once uh, that has been added to the list we'll close that so we will leave other uh, settings as default for now then once that has been done we'll click on OK and it's ready to be um, powered on so click on start Try or install Ubuntu.
Okay, now we need to choose our language. Um, so for me, it's English. Click on Next. Then Accessibility in Ubuntu. So if you like, you can configure this. So you need to select your keyboard layout. So it depends on what region you have and what specific keyboard layout you want. Um, for example, the UK, yeah, it has a different keyboard layout. Um, so um, for me, it's um, US is fine. So to connect to the internet, use wired connection. So you can update now if you like, but I'll skip that for now. So install the Ubuntu. So we can choose the interactive installation. So it is recommended to uh, select that. So it's okay, you can choose this one and then click on next. Just create an account. So in here you can select your time zone click on next so once that has been done then you can install so you just need to wait until all the installation finishes Our Ubuntu has been installed and we can restart the machine now. Okay guys, our um, Ubuntu has been installed in our virtual machine using um, virtual box. So we can always enable our Ubuntu Pro, but I'll skip that for now. Okay, so everything seems to be fine. Okay, I'll uh, sort that missing for now. Okay, so whenever you want to get back to the uh, virtual missing, you can again go ahead and click start. It will start the virtual missing again. So this way you can add more virtual missings. For an example, Ubuntu 26 when it comes out. So you can always add more virtual machines by doing the same processes. 
and that's it. You now have Ubuntu running on Windows using Oracle VirtualBox. This setup allows you to explore Linux without making any permanent changes to your system. If you found this video helpful, please support by like, share uh, and subscribe. Um, drop any questions in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.